Hey there and good morning. This is Wendy. This is Wendy's Parade of Perfume. Happy New Year to y'all because it is January 1st. I have the day off today. I'm on call though, but I have the day off. So I am here continuing my perfume haul, my personal long haul of accountability, letting go and letting and being transparent about all the perfume that I have gotten in the last 13 month -ish, months ish or so. So this is gonna cover between now, December, 2023 and November, 2022. So I am including two Black Fridays in that. So today I dug out all the Guerlain's I got and among a few other things. So this is like Guerlain and company, um, especially with the Guerlain's, I, tend to just collect them, okay? So if I like one, I'll get the flanker. If I see something that's affordable, I'll just get it. Now, they just released, oh, the sun's coming up. Oh, I haven't seen that in a hot minute. So they just released this long line of extraits. If I won the lottery or something, um, if I had a much better job, I would probably love to collect those too, but they're $600 a bottle. So obviously that level I don't, but you know, the Aqua Allegorias, the Mongerlans, yeah, I just tend to pick them up. It's Guerlain. It's the only, 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 only perfume house I do that for. So that's a long meandering way of saying some of these Guerlains I have not opened yet. Because like I said, I probably bought like a hundred perfumes this year over the last 13 months. And, uh, Admittedly, I have to admit, I have to be transparent. There is no way to possibly get to know all those perfumes in one year. This is why it needs to stop. So this is good for me. It's a little, it's actually a little embarrassing. You know, they say that you really have a problem when you are trying to hide what you're doing. And that goes for if you drink too much, do you drink, do you drink by yourself? Are you not honest with how much you drink? Uh, do you buy too much? Are you hiding your purchases? Are you running to the mailbox first? Are you, you know, messing with your credit card statement so your spouse doesn't see what you're doing? You know, are you hiding your purchases? You know, any anything like that. So it's 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 good to just be out in the open. <laughs> so, um, and again, this is literally not organized. I just am going through my perfume bottles and I'm like, oh, got this, got this, got that, got that, got this, got this, got that, got that. So this is niche. This is random. This is designer. This is, um, I think all the girl I got this year, but a couple, um, and a couple miscellaneous. So you all ready for part two of my long haul of accountability. There are approximately 25 perfumes here just because these are in the front. Um, this is a niche perfume company called Rogue, Rogue Perfumes. I got a couple perfumes from Rogue. I actually like Rogue a lot. Um, back in the day, do you guys remember this? Rogue used to be on Etsy and they did great sales. They would do like 25% off for Labor Day. And, um, they used to make 100 mil bottles. That's, I have a couple of those, like for the, um, Sheep Remoose and a couple other ones. But, um, anyway, they do affordable 30 mil bottles. I'm not as on the Rogue train as I used to be, but I do like Rogue. Anyway, I got Vetifleur this year. This is really pretty. I haven't worn it that much. That's what I mean. I need to wear my pretty perfumes. But obviously this is a floral, floral vetiver and a nice handy little 30 mil bottle. And that's about it. Like I said, not a reviews. Half of these I haven't gotten to know very well. And that's what it is. I don't like, this is dumb though. I don't like this packaging. What do you guys think about this? I'm probably gonna throw away this little cardboard thing, but maybe it protects the bottle. I mean, I don't know. Anyway, um, I have three rogues, so let's just get through those. So I got Vetifleur. I got Rose Rostracto. It's not, it's just called Rostracto, but it's a rose perfume. And it's an interesting rose perfume because it has like, charcoal and like birch tar and it's a it sometimes it acts jammy on the skin and then sometimes it acts dark on the skin but there's it's a quite anomalic um dark dark rose so rose restracto i think supposedly there's like mineral notes in here too or something but um it's it's interesting it's um it's different this is a rough gothic rose but a rogue restracto or as I call it in my head, Rose Restracto. Let's just 
throw what a mess. Throw all these over here. Um, the last one I actually have not worn very much. Much Rogue also released a bunch of oud perfumes, which they tend to. This company tends to be more on the natural side, um, and I picked out oud and sien, ancient oud. I haven't worn it yet. Again, I'm being. I'm not even gonna pretend. I haven't. I probably. I think I picked this up when I picked up Rose Restracto and I started wearing that one. Okay, switching gears. Um, I should just do a whole, and I'll have time this year because I'm not going to be buying anything. I can just go do like little house reviews. Uh, this is from Parfums Dompier, uh, one of my most favorite niche houses, probably one of my favorite houses just in general. But um, this is Vetiver Bourbon from Parfums Dompier. Anyone that likes Vetiver, this, this, is, a, this is a hot take. It's um, very masculine. It's very, I'll just show you guys the bottle. I still like to do that, take it out of the bottle. It's very masculine. It's uh, it's not aquatic, but it's salty. It would be like vetiver that has been sitting in the ocean and is then dried out by the sun. Um, I don't know all the notes on it, but that is, it is a very strong, it's a little bit single note, uh, like, lin like linear, but it is a strong, salty as vetiver. Um, when I wear this, I just do one spray and then I may even switch to another vetiver perfume because it's a lot. But I would say that if you absolutely adore vetiver, this is a good take, but it's not even like an easy green vetiver and it's not a vetiver that is just as, used as a base note. This is like a vetiver sulfur. Supposedly there's vanilla in here too, but I don't know. I haven't, um, I haven't quite noticed that. Um, I got this. Oh, so Fragrance Net has Parfum Stump here now. They finally went to the gray market. I just got Au Suave um, within the last year. I haven't opened it yet, but this is a floral one. Again, I haven't opened it yet, but it, this was like a $60 bottle and I couldn't say no. Oh, and I'm wearing Equestrius today too from Parfum Stump here. That's my scent of the day, but I've had that bottle for a while, so it's not in this box. Okay, a little rando here. Amalage is way too expensive for me to blind buy. Not that I have not done that in the past, but I wanted to test out Meander. Everybody is big on the guidance train, um, but I wanted to test Meander because this, like the uh, bourbon vetiver, it's supposed to be very woody, woody white floral, lots of sandalwood, lots of vetiver, lots of cedar um, with some narcissists and things like that. I don't know. I think this is... Um, yeah, carrot and orris root. So very earth, earthy sandalwood. I've tested this and I do like it, but um, I'm going to have to wear the whole sample to decide if I want to save up for a bottle. But I got a little sample of Meander from Amouage. I got a couple, let me see if I can even find all these. Um, I got a couple Chloe perfumes this year. Some of them I've actually shown you. I got the big bottle of Rose Rosa Damaskina. I'll just show you guys the bottle. I've showed this before, but... Uh, Rosa Damaskina. I use this as a base for my rose perfumes. Um, just like a pretty, very realistic rose water. Um, I like to just use it almost like as a base body spray. And uh, gray market this. These are like 500 bucks. Or not 500. They're five ounces and they're like $300 MSRP. I would not pay that much. But I was able to find it on Fragrance Set for like $95. Um, now, these two I ordered from Chloe just to, I don't know, I just felt like ordering from Chloe. I also got Santalum, which is a very low profile sandalwood. This is the smaller bottle. Let me show you guys what the smaller bottle looks like. And I'm very happy with this. Um, this is a nice sandalwood. It doesn't smell like that dill pickle Santal 33 sandalwood. And I also got the um, Rose Natural Intense, which is basically these two perfumes put together. It's like a rose sandalwood and uh, very natural, very easy to wear. And I like this one too. So heads up about Chloe. So you know how when you pay full price and you order from the actual retailer, um, depending on what you're doing, I don't know. I, I expect to get a sample or something and they don't, they don't send samples. I was a little disappointed when I opened the box and that's all that was in there. I was like, man, I just paid full price for these. Can't even send me a sample. Throw me a bone here. Um, I did get Chloe Nomad Natural. This has like dates and sandalwoods and white florals. I was wearing the Chloe Eau de Parfum, Chloe Nomad Eau de Parfum and Eau de Toilette a lot this summer. And I was like, gosh, I like these so much. I'm just going to get that flanker. 
And that's where that ends. So those are the Chloe's I got this year. Little rando. Okay, so you guys know me. I love sandalwood and I love rose. This is Boys 1920. Nope, it's not Bois. It's an it's a, an acronym for B-O-I-S, so it is boys. Um, Bottega Italiano Spigo in Del 1920. Whatever, I'm just reading the back. But anyway, um, boys 1920. So this is Rosa 23. Yes, Rosa 23. <gasps> this is such a great rose sandalwood. It has um, sandalwood's fantastic. The rose is blooming and lush, and it has a huge sweet and stewed date note so it's like a fruity floral rose with a, a fantastic bed of sandalwood and so glad i picked this up this is a really big bottle too i guess i think i got this on fragrance scent or something but uh plus a hit of incense this is really 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 pretty uh very good blind buy that i did this year but that's the only perfume i have from them i don't really know a lot about this company but yeah i got i don't even know where i heard about this from god knows god knows what gets in my head I also wanted, I did not want a Woody Rose. I wanted, I literally just wanted that Kelly Kalesh, but more designer. So I got Coach Eau de Parfum, which is like a rose leather, but done in a designer style. Plus I've never had a Coach perfume and I literally just wanted the bottle. Transparency, y'all, I'm telling you. I, I did. I like, I like their bottles. I don't know if I ever would like a Coach perfume, but... This was very affordable and expensive, and I, I do like this. It's easy to wear. Rose, uh, designer rose sandalwood. Or, I'm sorry, rose leather. But anyway, Coach Eau de Parfum. Let me get a... Oof. This is a very random one. Here's a random niche. I regard Centol by, where's the company? Legendar? Has anyone ever heard of this? Legendar by regard Centol. So by regard being those sour oranges on sandalwood. I do like this, but I have not worn this enough to do a full transparent review. But this is another rose sandalwood with oranges on top. Let's see. Bergamot, by regard orange, grapefruit, rose cardamom, sandalwood, and birch tar and vetiver. Yeah. But um, yeah, got this. Say, uh, this is actually done by. I was also interested in getting this because my favorite perfume, one of my favorite perfumes, is uh, Prada Infusion de Ris by Andela um, Daniela Andreer. Did I say Andela <laughs> Daniela Andreer? Um, and she did this perfume, so that's why I got it. Okay, I got Neri a one and a Coutal this year. Which I got closer to last year. I think I got this around Black Friday of 2022. But fully d'un soir. So Anna Coutal's aesthetic is usually very light. Uh, this is not. This is, first of all, it has a pom-pom on it. Look at this. I can't help. Oh, see, my nails met. My nails always have to match one bottle. There you go. <laughs> but um, this is a rose sandal with leather. And... I always test my perfumes before I do a full wearing just to see how they're going to act. Um, this one I had tested once or twice, but then one day I'm like, oh, I'm just going to wear this. And I put on like four to six sprays, which was way too much. Oh my gosh. This is probably the, strong, the strongest Enucutal I have ever smelled. The everything, the incense, the leather, the cocoa, very, very, very strong. Anyway, uh, strong, but gorgeous. Very happy with this, but just need one or two sprays. And uh, that's fully d'un soir. Been neglecting you. I need to wear this a little more often. The box literally just is this big because it has to hold the pom pom. <laughs> All the little charms, the charms on our perfume. Okay, so now I'm at my pile of Guerlain. Let's just do a couple that I've already shown you guys. I did a review on this year's Shalimar Melisem Iris which I have been wearing. You know, I'm actually, it's so weird to me that I've done this, but I've been wearing this to work more than anything because it's such an easy Shalimar and it's so, um, the zeitgeist is uh, very current. You know, it's ethyl maltol, caramel creme brulee, white musk type thing. Uh, but yeah, I've been wearing it to work and looking forward to next year's. 
Uh, so I did pick up Shalomar Millis M. Iris this year. Um, I finished a little sample. So I got a 10 mil bottle of Jasmine Bon here, which I really like, which is like a Jasmine fruity floral, but um, I'm never going to get the, the giant less ex uh, Lartan materials line. It's too expensive because the one I did get this year, which speaking of Shalimar, I should do a review on this one. I did get Bois d'Armini. I had an older bottle of it when they were in the tall rectangular cylindrical bottles and uh I like that one a lot and that one was finished up so this is resinous and it's woody and it's a little bit of sweet and it reminds me of Shalimar but it's different enough that I can justify although let's just be honest I can justify anything but I did pick this up this year and that's going to be the only one from that line I pick up because that is not cheap um, this one, even though I have not opened it yet, I did test it and it just got to be the end of the summer. I never opened it up. This is Aqua Allegoria. How do you even say that? Natar de, Sol. Natar de Sol. This is a very gorgeous, uh, white floral. It's just a very, very pretty white floral. I really like that one. So this year, I'm really into roses, really into my light roses. I think I talked about that at some point this year. So what I did was, oh my God, I'm so bad. One, two, three, four. Here comes four. Here comes four aqua allegorias, all in the same house, all in the same group. So I do like the Rosa Rosa, full disclosure. I think that if you have some staple roses that are light, and maybe on the fruity floral side, maybe on the musky side. I don't feel like these are necessary, but they just crashed a niche, a niche for me this year. And uh, I tended to, um, these two, I tended to layer a lot, but I did wear um, Rosa Rosa Harvest quite a bit this year. So speaking of which, they have Harvest, they have Rosa Rosa Eau de Parfum, they have the Eau de Toilette, they have this, they have that. So... What I have is the Harvest, which is like a fruit, a, ro a rosy, fruity floral. And I also have the Eau de Toilette that I was mixing with it, which basically looks like the same thing. It just doesn't have a little tie on it. This doesn't have a tie. I even think this is a tester and it has a tie. Anyway, usually I keep all my little charms. But anyway, this is the Eau de Toilette, which is a pinch more effervescent I think and just for good measure because like I said I I tend to pick things up if I can when it's Guerlain I did get the plain old Eau de Parfum which I have not opened yet which I will probably open next year next summer it actually is next year it's next summer um a little bit different I did find Ro the Rosa Palisandro this one's really cool. It's a lot darker than a lot of the uh, Aqua Allegorias because it has like a coriander spice. It has rosewood. It has um, patchouli. So these are fruity florals and this is a woody floral. This is really pretty. I like this with a lot of sandalwood too. Another Aqua Goria pi Allegoria pickup I got this year and I really like is the Neurolia Vetiver. This is so pretty. I should do a review on this. It's like um, the most realistic orange blossom neroli that you could ever imagine on a white rose on a bed of vetiver. And it is perfection. It, it does smell natural. Um, it smells natural. It smells true to the source. It is absolutely gorgeous. And obviously I have several vetiver perfumes in this in this pile. I love vetiver. I guess if you hate vetiver, you won't like this, but... This is just so well done, and I feel like that combination of notes is a little different. Correct me if I'm wrong, or if you guys know of, of a perfume that is in this motif, let me know, but yes. So, because because I'm me, I got the Eau de Toilette. So I have the, which one is this? This is just the regular Forte um, Eau de Parfum, and I also picked up the Eau de Toilette, which I have not tested yet, because I just... I haven't layered it yet. Okay, I'm getting, I'm already getting to the end because I'm just trying to get through this. Oh, just trying to get through this. So I found this Mon Guerlain called Lessons. Okay, this is, I haven't tested it yet. 
because I'm still I love regular Mongrelon and that's just what I've been wearing so far this winter. That's like my winter bedtime perfume. But so this perfume, I never thought I was going to get my hands on because um, this was actually like a Russian exclusive, like it was for sale in Eastern Europe and Russia. And then Russia did that thing where they started a war with Ukraine and LVMH kind of pulled that back and it never kind of went anywhere. And I think that they just held onto it and then they dumped it into the gray market, which is where I found it. So anyway, Mongrelon with a tiara flower in it, which is why I wanted to try it because I really do love Mongrelon. And found this for a good price. I got the sparkling bouquet because I actually am, um, even though I don't talk about it about about it a lot. I love I love Mongrelon. I love the floral. I like um, the original. I like the eau de toilette. Okay, on to the last Guerlain that I literally just got. What well, is one of the last perfumes I've got this year? And I'm not into this line that much, but. La Petite Robe Noir Rose Cherry. So this one supposedly too was just supposed to be sold in Paris or something and it got dumped onto the gray market for about five minutes and I happened to see it and I said yoink and now I can't find it anymore. I really wanted to try this one because it's rose and I wanted to try the uh, cherry blossom because I like rose cherry blossom. So hopefully, so hopefully I like this <laughs> because I don't know. <laughs> um, in the meantime, though, and that's why I also I'm getting overwhelmed with this. I have a lot to test. I have a lot to work out. I have a lot to organize. I have a lot to learn from my perfumes. But literally, like, I don't keep up with this line, really. I think the only other uh, La Petite Robe Noir that I have is the Black Perfecto. But they already, they made one of these called Rose, Rose, Rose. Never saw that. They made this one. And like literally right now they have one called Rose Noir that's coming out this year. And I'm like, this is so fast and too much. Who the hell can keep up with all this? And it's not meant to be kept up with. Like you don't necessarily need to do this. I was just stunned by this combination. I really, really love um, Neroleum Vetiver. But I, I am like, this is... Like that's every couple, when you think about it, a couple times a year is literally every like 12 weeks. That's like every couple of weeks, they're like pumping one of these out. I'm not going to get that Rose Noir one because, because I'm just not, because I'm going, because I'm going on a low rye. I'm not, I'm not doing that this year because I have plenty. Look at all these pretty perfumes that I have not used yet. And that's what I mean. I wasn't going to open them up and pretend I knew what I was talking about because I'm not. Because I haven't. I haven't gotten to it yet. I'm not there yet. But anyway, uh, that's my accountability haul. Those are the Galans I picked up this year. And along with a random coach and a couple Chloe's and some uh, Rogue perfumes. I like them too. Anyway, I think I have one, probably one more group to go. Maybe it won't, maybe it'll be a little bit less than 100. Maybe it'll just be like 75, which is still not, that's not okay. But uh, yeah, I'll have to go dig through and make an assessment of my next batch. So that is part two of my 2023 slash 2022 overall haul. What are you guys wearing on New Year's? Let me know what your son of the day is and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.